<laughs> Kurt, you are a uh, unaffiliated or a non-affiliated uh, candidate for position one. And you got uh, kind of a dogfight in there. There's Kurt Ankerberg, there's Rick Dyer, who was the Republican candidate, Kurt's a Libertarian, and there's Tanya Morrow. So this is like a four-way race right now. So this is going to be quite the battle. And we've had you on the program before, and a lot of folks are wondering, all right, you ran. Didn't you run back in 2002? Yes, I did. Okay, right. In 2002, you ran for county commission at that point. Did not run in 06? No. Okay. All right. Tell us a little bit about yourself and... Um, I know we've had you on with your battles with the county, but we'll and we'll talk with that here in just a bit. But your bit your background and what you think you're bringing to the table to be a county commissioner. Well, Bill, I've been a businessman all my life. I've been a reporter now for probably 12, 14 years for the U.S. Observer. I've been a self-taught on the Constitution. We've co-founded uh, two uh, very aggressive government watchdog groups. Um, the emphasis has always been on smaller government, more efficient government, mm-hmm. and uh, accountable government, and as little a government as we can surround ourselves with. And that's what we teach. We teach the Constitution. And uh, it it's became to the point that if you're a patriot, you're like some sort of a leper, uh, in Oregon anyway. Uh, what I bring to the table is a style of leadership that you'll see nowhere else. I've never seen anyone. I don't know anyone like me. That self-taught. Well, you're the best. The uh, you're, you're the best current chancellor I know. So uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I'll put it that way. Uh, you know, in all seriousness. So self-taught. Now, self-taught. Some people will say that means that. Uh, what you're if you're self-taught. I mean, how could you know anything? Well, it's more like I haven't been indoctrinated and brainwashed by government schools. Uh, I was taught by people every bit as smart, are smarter on history, constitution, and politics than is in any college. So I I don't feel that my education is any less that for this job. This job's about people. It's about doing the right thing. It's about knowing what to do. It's about leadership. So it's about managing also a $300 million budget, is it not? Uh, It's about a bunch of zeros. It's nothing different than any small business. It's just zeros except for the fact that you've got an army of very intelligent people working already in that system to run it. If all three commissioners disappeared off the planet tomorrow, that system would work just fine because the administrative part of that system is functioning pretty well. So that would be uh, Danny Jordan and the, and the basic staff over there. Yes, yeah. We, we, we've got some very smart people that work for the county, especially in the finance areas. So what problems do we have with the county that you would like to see addressed? And what do you think you could do to help affect some of that change? Well, one of the things is the commissioners are the elected officials, and they're the ones that represent the people. In my view, the, the administrators and the administrative staff represent the government, the mm-hmm. county government. And the county government seems to be in charge not the commissioners. We have given Danny, as everyone knows, you know, the ability to write a $5 million check. We can enter into contract when there's commissioners are not around for a quorum uh, for several million. Uh, I watch Mr. Jordan on uh, our administrator over and over in these commissioner meetings when even county council has asked a question, our administrator answers it. Very often, he answers it. There's, there's now, I know you've been to... in a lot of these meetings, too, oh, yeah. so I'm going to take your word for it here. I, his... I can't say I exactly watch the meetings religiously. Perhaps I should. But we, we, have, uh, we have an administrative department that is far more powerful in our county government than our commissioners. They're nothing but head shakers and signers. So you yourself, though, said that the administration is functioning pretty well. It's a pretty professional administration. Yes. So... Why do we need to change this? I don't know that we do need to change that particular part of it. The particular part of the finance uh, has to be looked at. You know, everybody that runs for office has all these great, wonderful ideas about what they're going to do when they get in office. Mm-hmm. They have no clue. That's why when you look that look on people's office the night they're elected, and then look at the look on their face seven months, eight months down the road when they found out the real story and when they found out what's really going on and find out what they've committed to. And that look is no longer that, that bright, hopeful look. It's, 
it's kind of a hollow, what have I gotten myself into? Or is it more, or do you think it's more in the neighborhood of, uh, all right, time for the good old boys to go along and get along? Well, that's what happens because you don't have leaders strong enough. Uh, these, these people that are running for office right now have very little knowledge of the Constitution, I think. I think they have very little knowledge of the history. They have very little knowledge that one of the most basic things that w- we need to fight for is the right to a jury trial. Now, everybody wants to think about that issue. It's not a, a single-faceted issue. It's a multifaceted well, that's issue. A com- that is a note that some people have written to me, mm-hmm. and they're saying that uh, Kurt Chancellor is a single-issue candidate. He's here at the jury trial. He's running against the county. So why don't you just e- explore why you think this is important and dissuade people from uh, thinking that you're just running on the jury trial issue? Well, our founding fathers, when they gave us our Bill of Rights, they knew that any time government was pitted against a citizen, that government was going to have an unproportionate amount of power that the citizen did not possess. So, But they also gave us the ability to defend ourselves through the Bill of Rights by having our neighbors and our community decide our guilt and innocence, not government. And by doing that, they gave us protections that really no other uh, government uh, in the world has that particular uh, ability. Uh, England's close, but one of the few that is. I think that uh, that issue is uh, long from being one of the only issues. We have so many issues in departments. Uh, If the county right now, any department in the county has you cited for a violation, we just w- was there yesterday and watched uh, their administrative system uh, ruling on things. It was the biggest mess I've ever seen in my life. Now, by the way, this administrative hearing system that we have is a relatively new creation in Jackson County, is it not? Yes, 2003. In 2003, uh, let me see, we had a... Uh, Two Democrats and a Republican that took your right to a jury trial and created this administrative monster that we have today. The one is, you have no rights, none. You have the right to pay. You have the right to complain, and you have the right to appeal it to another government agency without a uh, trial or without an elected judge Mm -hmm. if you don't like it. So you pretty much, unless you've had a little difficulty on land use issues, you have no idea the monster that they've created. The, the, the commissioners that are now didn't create this, but they have wielded it like a sword as far as taking properties, uh, fines. They put business after small business out. Uh, you was talking to Sal Esquivel earlier about yes. his father. Well, you know, all of that stuff uh, today, his father wouldn't be able to do anything because it's all illegal. Small businesses, home businesses, they've ran them all out, and they're looking for them daily to run out, and they do. Kurt Chancellor who is running for uh, Jackson County Commissioner. He's in position one, not affiliated. Uh, Let me ask you, why didn't you go for a party affiliation this time around? I don't want to be tied to any of these people. Uh, Why? Well, there's not a single one out there that represents me. Uh, Conservative conservative Republicans uh, would probably be the closest. I've got a little bit of of, uh, certain things that Democrats have, but all in all, I don't have anyone that represents me. We've talked about it again and again in meetings, and uh, the people that passed the petitions to put me on this ballot felt they didn't have a representation because none of the parties represented them, especially the two-party system. Okay. Kurt, going back to the issue of the the jury trial, the administrative dispute resolution that we have here in Jackson County, from what I'm hearing then, you think that this is so key that needs to be addressed here in the uh, county government because it has to do with, uh, from what I would interpret then, the fundamental relationship. What does a citizen, how does a citizen relate to Jackson County? Is that kind of where I'm, where I'm am I getting this right uh, from you? Yes, yes. The, the, the problem that, that we have is just like, uh, just like with so many businesses, um, I had, had some people we tried to help uh, through the U.S. Observer, and uh, the county was uh, trying to shut down his business. Everybody in the neighborhood liked him. There hadn't been a single complaint. The only victim is Jackson County's rules they felt were being broken. Mm-hmm. I helped him put his documents together and do his filings. 
for about seven months. And uh, nope, they found him guilty. He couldn't be in his business anymore. It had to be shut down, or it could be up to a $10,000 a day fine. Now, this is all without a judge. And all by someone whose contract begins with, he works at the pleasure of the county commissioners in his contract. Now, that being said, this young man uh, had so embattled with the county that it began to spread over into his, his family and, and his wife. At the end of the day, about seven months down the road, when we appealed it to Luba, Luba said, no, no, he can have his business. Mm-hmm. By that time, the county had forced him out of his, his, his home business. He had to go rent a business. Then he had to move everything out of that business. With all of that, he not only wound up losing his business, because you can only go back so many times. He, he couldn't go back. But that time, to him, the well, yeah. him and his <clears throat> wife were so embattled with each other over some of the issues and some of the fighting this thing that they're in a divorce. We see it again and again and again. A lot of times when these little businesses are put out, they wind up being even a divorce in these issues okay. or a suicide. All right, so tell me where I'm seeing this wrong then, because uh, I remember when I, I would interview past commissioners such as the late mm-hmm. Jack Walker, mm-hmm. and he said that our goal here is that uh, we want to make Jackson County a very business-friendly climate. And where did we go wrong? Well, my first question would be how, they, how that was working for them. These small businesses that are home businesses, these guys are craftsmen. Most of them are far better technicians and many of the technicians that are in town in the large shops they don't have the overhead they've got the time to spend with their customers i know you were dealing with a similar battle with your own transmission shop grandfathered in under uh, what you claim was grandfathered in under old uh, or no permitting required back in the day right oh uh, exactly exactly but that has nothing to do with my my battle with the county i've been fighting the county for 25 years uh on anything that they do that violates the rights of the people I represent the people. Uh, the commissioners you have down there now represent government. They don't represent the people. When they represent the government, the only people they represent are the people who are needy for government help. They how don't so? represent people. How so? Well, give me give me an example on how you think that they represent uh, you know people looking for government help. Well, all you have to do is look at uh, everything that's going on right now. If you're a county employee, you have every advantage, every advantage, advantages that most of the people here, even people with a job, don't have. They don't make the salary, they don't have the insurance coverage, and they don't have the retirement that the county has. The county is constantly pushing like, oh, what's a good example of that? A community justice. Now, community justice, we went after community justice a number of years ago when Bob Grindstaff was in charge of that. We found so much corruption that it eventually led to him resigning. Resigning, yeah. And Danny Jordan, our uh, administrator now, came to fill that position. Now, that kind of co- corruption went on for a long time. We tried to get the commissioners. We tried to get uh, Sue Slack to bring in an independent uh, investigator from the state. Nobody did so. There's so much corruption down there that one man, one commissioner would only be able to identify it. It's going to take two commissioners to change it, two like-minded commissioners. And you consider yourself, apparently, one of those like minds. Well, yes. I come there with all kinds of experience. I know where the bodies are buried down here. (laughs) Are you proposing, then, that uh, county staff needs cleaned out? Or are you talking about the closure? Because on one hand, you're saying, Kurt, that um, county staff is very professional. The administration has done a pretty good job over there. You're thinking that they're kind of running the, the railroad for the sounds of it and that you wanted to change that. So where is the corruption? Only only parts of that. We have corruption because of the denial of a jury trial. Okay. We have uh, corruption because of the denial of an elected judge. We have corruption because you have no appeal system, none, other than a writ of review appeal, mm-hmm. which is no appeal at all. You're not entitled to stand and face your accuser when they bring you in. So you're talking about everything involving code enforcement and land use. now. Well, code enforcement builds another thing. You don't enforce the laws of Oregon. You have to be a trained, somebody who's been through DPS, uh, uh, is my understanding, to enforce any of the laws of Oregon. Do we do that in Jackson County? 
no, our, these guys are hired off the street and uh, given a ticket book, and they go out and give citations. All of these things, there's so many things that need to be looked at. It, it's, it's hard to narrow it down. One of the things that needs to be changed also is the positions that the government takes on uh, complaining citizens. You ought to make a complaint sometimes down there and see what it takes to try to get it through at, on any department. The only department I found down there is the elections department that, that just seems to whistle. It just seems to move right on. They've been helpful. Calls returned, called back. Is there anything we can help with? Hmm. Even the state, Secretary of State's office on the elections, it's been the way government should be. So they do a pretty good job. But you're saying as far as getting other county departments accountable, not so good. No. Uh, have you been to the planning department? No, not lately. <laughs> Try it. Were you aware that uh, we had a telephone pole ran over and knocked down? I told them I wanted to get a permit, and so they said, okay, and they gave me a permit. And I said, no, wait a minute, when can I start? And they said, no, this is a permit, so you can apply for the permit to put the pole in. So you have to get a permit. You have to get a, to permit, get a permit to get the permit to repair the damage that somebody else did. Yep. Okay. All right, so it's a, a kind of a microcosm well, of what's yeah. wrong here. And the county for years has done illegal dumping. They've done illegal dumping all over the county, filled in wetlands, and yet they cite constantly cite someone else in the citizens' view for the same thing. All right. Kurt Chancellor's here once again. He's running for a county commissioner position one. Kurt, last hour we were kind of getting into basically a lot of theory on um, on on the relationship of a Jackson County citizen to Jackson County government. And from the sounds of it, you want to change that. You want to restore this to a more constitutional point of view. Exactly. Okay. So, okay, what what can one guy do about this? Uh, it takes two. You, you, you have to have two. Uh, the only thing one person can do is make the public aware. He can use his position as a bully pulpit to make the citizenry aware of what's going on. Okay. Uh, there's none of that going on right now. Little things that people never think about. Meetings have been held at the, in the evening. Uh, it, it would be a huge help. I think you'll see those chairs filled a lot more with interested parties, but they can't take off work. Well, I know that I can't come to county oh. meetings in the middle of the day. It's the, it's the height of my work day. It's no, impossible. everything. When people say, well, the county's doing great, Kurt, what do you want to do? I mean, it's doing great. Well, well, it is from the standpoint for the county, but the people aren't doing great. Okay, and what can you do about that as a county commissioner? Because, you know, I, I think maybe there's some confusion about what the role of a county commissioner is. Some are talking about, well, this is about setting policy, and you tell Danny Jordan what to do. I, mean, I, I think that's what part that's of all. that is. Yeah, yeah. That's that's certainly part of it. Other people are saying, well, you also had kind of managing a three hundred million dollar budget. Is that also part of it? You're overseeing that. Yeah. Overseeing it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, and but then you're talking about restoring rights here, and I don't know if people are are going to connect that with Jackson County running more effectively and or slash efficiently. What do you think? Well, it, it, it definitely will. One of the first things that uh, two commissioners, like-minded commissioners, can do is start changing ordinances that restrict home businesses. Home businesses uh, can be a huge attribute, especially to the outlying areas. Uh, for instance, in Sam's Valley, uh, yeah, you've got several home businesses, and each one of those performs a, a different function. And these people are some of the best I've ever seen at that function. They're not in town. They're out there. Do they come to town? A few people come to town, but mostly they take care of that little area. If they get one complaint, Jackson County will put them out of business, period. No questions asked. They've done it to me. They And if they can do it to me, they can do it to anybody. Now, the authority that they use to put you out of business in your transmission shop area way back when, I know you've been having a slow burn battle with Jackson County for many years on this. Mm -hmm. So the authority they were using was uh, basically land use. And land use is a pretty powerful club and from uh, Senate Bill 100 through the state down through the county. And remember, we're, we're kind of told here that the even in the charter, the county commissioners are agents of the state. That's right. So where do you go on this? Well, that's that's true. But the problem is with these land use issues, that, that are holding us out. Land use issues put people out of business. 
it hurts our economy. I think it's by design, though, Kurt. Yes, I, honestly, I think and, and that's just it. And you're fighting an agenda that uh, started with Tom McCall and wanting to protect his beach house back in Senate Bill, yeah. you know, one hundred day. And you know, there's another example of that great progressive Republican infecting the state of Oregon. All right, this is you know, even plagued by these type of people for a long, long time. Yeah, oh, and will be for a long time. The thing that I found so interesting, I've studied the law for a long time. I've uh, studied the Constitution. I've written articles on the law. I've written articles on the Constitution. I've taught the Constitution. And I've written a lot of articles on administrative rule. And I go there armed with tools that none of these people have that are going to be running. None. Other than maybe one, the law. Now, Rick Dyer, what's been a car salesman, worked in the car business uh, most of his career. Now he's taken on and educated himself. Uh, good for Rick. Yeah. Uh, he uh, he educated himself from a school and got his diploma from uh, apparently a, a, a college that uh, Oregon just doesn't recognize. So he can't get a bar license here. If you've got the young lady, uh, Miss Morrow, Morrow. Yeah. over at uh, Phoenix. She's an attorney. Seventy-eight percent of Everyone elected to these major offices and throughout our country are attorneys. How has that worked out for us? It hadn't worked out very well at all. What's needed down there is some common sense. I come there with common sense. I come there with an education in law and the Constitution and an administrative rule. And the two most important there are administrative rule and the Constitution. Baby steps have to be taken. The first thing that someone's elected goes into that office they have to do is they have to really find out what's going on there. And that that take about six months. If you have two commissioners, what happens after that is you start seeing changes in ordinances. Ordinances that discourage business, that discourage investments. I find it interesting. I was reading an article here a few years ago about successful uh, businesses. And you look at all these huge, huge businesses and corporations in this country, and most of them started in a basement, in somebody's garage, in a, in a room somewhere. And those same basements and garages in Jackson County, for all intents and purposes, with rare exception, it's illegal for them to do much. <laughs> exactly. So, not to put words in your mouth, then, I would see you as more of an anti-restriction candidate what can we do to facilitate an organic growth of Jackson County business? Would that be fair? Yep. 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 Business business from all sizes, large and small, needs to be made a lot friendlier. These, these, these commissioners will uh, work real hard for somebody that's going to bring a lot of money into this valley. And that's fine. And I think it should happen. They haven't been very successful at it. At the same time, they're trying to bring money in. They're putting little businesses out. When, when, when our code enforcement goes out and cites a guy who's got two people working for him and they're working at home and don't have any real complaints, they're running a clean operation, and uh, they're putting these guys out of business. Now, th- three families have to worry about it. The part stores. All of that. Brad, you're with Kurt Chancellor. Go ahead. Good morning, William. Morning. Mr. Chancellor, Ch- Ch- I hate to put you on the spot, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Who do you support for county sheriff, Mike Winters or Corey Falls? No question, Corey Falls. Thank you, sir. Why? I know Mike too well to support him. I supported him in the beginning. I watched the demise of uh, everything that he claimed he stood for. I've watched uh, an NF- a lot of great deputies out there. And I've had some great experiences with them. And because uh, I work with law enforcement in articles and one thing and another. And, and, but the problem, as you've got now, is there's a lack of uh, unprofessionalism that goes through our sheriff's department. And uh, it's got to come from the, up on top. The leadership and policy has to come from it. There's no leadership, there's no policy. It amazes me that it, uh, it sheriff's department gets through from month to month. And where is Mike Winters? I've went to the sheriff's office half a dozen times and found him yet. I've talked to people all over. They can't find him. Where's he at? He's not down there in his office. Well, we're not here to debate the sheriff's race. Uh, but that's race why that, I'm, uh, that's I'm supporting him. All right. So 
So you would have, if you were to get two like-minded county commissioners, would you then roll back the dispute resolution that was put in place in 2003? Yes, sir. I'd do everything to make that possible. What would that mean then for the average Jackson County person in their dealing with county government? What is then restored? Because it would sound that there was a more, at least using your words, a more constitutional way of looking at code enforcement and disputes with the county prior to 2003. Well, for 230 years, we've dealt with the things the same. When government accuses you of something, you have a right to a jury trial. And the difference is, is if somebody accuses you of something that you're doing that's, uh, you uh, can't have a transmission shop here. You can have a Dairy Queen over here. Uh, you can only have two employees. That fence can only be that tall. Mm-hmm. All of those things are subject to the decisions of the people, not these guys. Isn't, though, um, part of the code enforcement, though, about peace and tranquility and order in our neighborhoods? Isn't well, that the reason why we have these? I don't think so. It's about control. Everything with government's about control. Government doesn't do anything for the people. What they do is for government. If it helps the people, great. If it doesn't, they don't care. They're going to do what they want to do. They Mm -hmm. always have, and they always will until people start standing up. You know, people don't understand the only thing they have working for them is that old Constitution that everybody thinks is an outdated document. That's the only thing that they have, the only protection. And I can't imagine somebody that could be so so small-minded that that wouldn't be a major issue to them. Kurt Chancellor, running for position one, county commissioner. Hello, Lauren. Question or comment? Go right ahead. Yes, yes, I have one question for Kurt, and that is, is he prepared for liberal Democrats to get greater control of our county by him splitting the Republican or conservative vote? Well, you know, that's an interesting thing. Your, your rights to a jury trial, your rights to stand and face your accuser, all were taken away by a conservative Republican and uh, a liberal, uh, two liberal Democrats. My businesses and the other businesses here in this valley that have been shut down and done away with were done so by three Republicans. Um, I'm not prepared not to run. I didn't just one day wake up and say I'm going to run. I had people come to me and ask me to run. I had people getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of signatures so I could run. Running the way I am, I have no loyalty to any party. My only loyalty is to the people and to the Constitution. Well, it sounds to me like you're, you're, you're not caring about whether we have a conservative or, or liberal. Um, con- well, uh, you're hearing it wrong, partner. Well, it's been through this twice already, and uh, you got C.W. Smith once. Look at the Republicans you got. How much worse are they going to be than a Democrat? Don, question on ONC funds. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, if you were to become a county commissioner, would you uh, push back against the federal government and try and get some of the ONC money back into this county? And I'll just listen to your answer. Thanks, Don. Night and day. Uh, counties right now, the associated uh, counties that uh, are uh, – working together now to try to get their uh, ONC funds back. Um, I think they're on the right track. Uh, there seems to be um, a lack of leadership. There's, there's no fire in the bellies of the, the commissioners that are, that are doing this. They act like the federal government uh, is God. The, the federal government is uh, nothing but a thief and a pirate that has stole the people's land. And the uh, Constitution is uh, pretty clear on that. They can't own land unless they purchase it from the state. Are you pretty, are you advocating then for all intents and purposes, uh, not taking the federal grants, not taking the money, not because there's a lot of pass through funding that goes through that $300 million a year budget in Jackson County. I mean, there's a lot of it, Kurt. And there's a lot of strings attached. Any, any monies that are taken from any of these people, it's going to have to be shown that the strings aren't going to damage the rights of the people or hurt the county down the road. I don't think we ever even look at a lot of those strings that are attached. What do you think of the um, the constitutional sheriff's point of view when it comes to working with uh, the forest and such? You familiar with Apache County and such? 
Uh, yeah, uh, somewhat. Uh, as as I, I talked with Commissioner Breidenthal about that, and he you know, went and did some studying up on that back in the day. We have went to several of the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the ultimate law enforcement officer in the county is the sheriff, and he is the one that was elected to be so. A lot of people think it's the district attorney. He works for the state. He doesn't, uh, he's not a county employee. We pay him, but he is a state officer. A sheriff is the all ending power, I think, mm-hmm. over FBI, over anybody. They are the power. And if they won't stand up and they roll over when we've got some issues, there's going to be some issues down the road, I'm afraid, that we're going to need a sheriff to stand up for us. All right. Time for another call or two. Ron, question on conflict of interest. Fire away. Yeah, good morning, Bill, and good morning, Kurt. I, uh, I'm i not familiar with all the details of your dispute with Jackson County, but as I understand it, it's basically an issue of whether uh, your appeal to an administrative law judge constitutes the final say versus a jury trial. Would that be accurate? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, then the question I have for you is this is a kind of a continuation of a dispute, even though the administrative uh, rule provides the end all. And I understand and I support your uh, argument. My question is, running as a candidate for as a county commissioner position, if this is not resolved, does that put you in a position of conflict? I mean, I wanted to get your take on that because that's a bit of an unusual circumstance. Would you agree? Yeah, it is interesting to have a candidate that's also had, uh, you know, a battle with the same uh, board he's wishing to join. Right. Well, I don't think it's a conflict. Uh, I fought those battles with a lot of other people and helping them with paperwork and decision makings and filings that were losing their property for 10 or 12 years before my issue. My issue's over. My, that deal's done. Uh, I'm not going to sue them. I'm not going to go after them. I'm just going to do everything that I can as a commissioner, if I'm elected, to make sure what happened to myself and many others in this county never happens again. All right. Appreciate that, Kurt. Thank All right. You. Yes, sir. Thanks, Ron. And yeah, let's go to Jim. Jim on uh, building permit costs. Kurt Chancellor here. Go ahead. Oh, hi. Morning, Bill. Morning, Curtis. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, I was wondering what your take was on the building permit costs in uh, Jackson County. Uh, you know, I've been here just for two years, and I, I was purchasing a land, about six acres, and I went in to ask what the possibility of putting a house on that lot was. And uh, I was just appalled, and they were saying, well, it's going to be $16,000 just for me to get a building permit. And I said, $16,000 just to get a building permit? <laughs> and they said, well, you got to pay this tax, you got to pay that tax, you got to pay these taxes. Now, there is a certain amount of that which is uh, mandated by SB 100 or these land use uh, fees. They are taxes and fees that go to the state of Oregon. Yeah, well, I thought that was just astronomical. And even uh, the person before me pulled out of buying the land because of these building permit costs. And so I'm wondering, would the, chance, uh, uh, would the chancellor have any um, uh, thought about that? Can they be changed, these policies? Well, part of them can. The ones at the county level can be. And one thing that can be changed for sure is the price of those permits. I find it interesting. Uh, at, a, at a commission meeting I was in, I heard Doug Bridenthal and on radio say that, well, it's only fair that these people that are building the home pay it. They're, they're, they're going to gain something from it. Why should the citizens of Jackson County uh, allow them to build something and not charge uh, prominent fees for it? They're not gaining anything out of it. And the first thing I thought was when they build that home, they never have to pay taxes. They're not going to be on a tax roll. But they don't think that that existence of that structure, until the day that structure is not there in the future, is going to be paying taxes. What do they mean? Uh, they, they could give those permits away. What are they saying? That all of the taxes that are going to come in on that property, and as the values go up, the taxes go up. Well, to be fair here, uh, Kurt, a lot of those fees, the building permit fees, go to pay for the departments overseeing them. Right. I thought building permit fees, is, uh, fees if I can interject, is, is just to say, talk about the safety of the building and make sure it, it meets oh, no! Oh, it's not about safety. Come on. You know, it, it's about money, Jim, at least in my opinion. And you, know, you, you see what's going on. It's about money. The question is, uh, is it a reasonable amount of money? Because you, know, you have to have a building permit, right? You've got to do that. Yep. You have to do that. And um, they use these fees to pay for the department itself. Well, right? that's what I'm saying. I don't think that's too fair. Costly. You know, I... Uh, okay, so you don't, th- you don't think it's fair, Kurt? What do you think? Oh, you go ahead well, I think we have to have them. Uh, I think the fees are excessive. Uh, all you have to do is check with other counties. The fees are very excessive. 
And uh, like I said, I, uh, I believe that when that property is taxed, when it's finished, that project is, it's on the tax rolls. For as long as it exists, it's going to be tax paid on it. And I think that's enough. The fees need to be reasonable, and I don't think they are. All right. We're out of time here, Kurt. We appreciate your take. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thank Probably you. have you back. Maybe have a uh, candidate forum. Get get everybody in here and have at it some morning. Here. Boy, that'd be fun. Yeah, it sure <laughs> it sure would be. Uh, Facebook, email, website. You have anything like yes, that going website. on? Yes, website is dot com. All of the thanks for Twitter, donation, Facebook. It's all on the website. All right. Very good. Thanks for stopping by, Kurt. Thank you. Pleasure.